This is Brian Forster, and this is a composite of our recent tour to Turkey. That is a Roman period fortress on top of the mountain. We then proceeded to Mount Nemrut on top of this tumulus, and here we saw some destroyed figures from the Roman era. Why they haven't put them back together, I have no idea. Then it was off to Gobekli Tepe, dated at being probably 11,500 years old, but it was built in two time periods. The oldest time period appears to be um, when the construction of the giant pillars were done. Some estimates state that they are 10 to 20 tons in weight, and now they've built a giant tent over top of it to protect the site from weathering. This is supposedly only 5% of what they could excavate or will in the future. There's also the nearby Urfa Museum where they have exact copies of the standing T-shaped pillars. And most of the excavations began in the mid 1990s and are proceeding up to this day. And they also have some reproductions of what they think houses from that time period may have looked like. Next we saw these beehive-shaped houses quite close to the Syrian border, actually within five miles, I think. Then we decided to explore the Euphrates River, which prior to that I did not know flowed through Turkey. And we even visited a dam that was constructed for hydroelectric purposes. And some of the villages, ancient villages, actually were buried by the floodwaters, which is sad in terms of archaeology. But there's also a huge Roman fortress, as you can see. And this is one of the villages. You can see the minaret still sticking out of the water with the mosque underwater. Next, it was to a quarry where large figures, such as this lion, were roughly hewn before moving to other sites. After this, we went to a museum with had such things as elongated skulls. These are 7,000 years old, so older than the ones in Peru. And as in other societies, it was only the noble class who had this done to them. After that, we went to a site called San Simeon, which is megalithic in nature, but also a lot of construction in the later Roman and later time periods. And then this is called the Titus Tunnel, which uh, academia believes was done during Roman times, but I think is clearly ancient megalithic and then later altered by the Romans. There's no way all of this work could have been hand done because the Titus Tunnel is almost a mile long cut into the bedrock. These water channels, or this water channel you can see on the side, was probably done during Roman times. But you just see the sense of scale and how much effort it would have taken to do this. No way it could have been done with hand tools. And even when we went outside, you can see the sculpting of the side wall here on the right. So in total, much more than a mile of work was done. This is the 
deformed skull of King Midas. And we went to the tomb where he or his father was buried, deep into an artificial mound, once again called a tumulus. And these excavations, as far as I remember, were quite recent. Sorry about the poor quality of the video, but this simply is a composite of what I recorded on my cell phone. And this is the entrance to the tomb of Midas or his father. We then went to Hattusha, where we saw evidence of lost ancient high technology, as in more than 50 precision drill holes and other evidence. There's also a Hittite period tunnel that we walked through. It's actually a very massive ancient site. And then these set of two gates, they appear to be megalithic in nature. And this site appears to have two time period constructions, the Hittite and then earlier megalithic. We also saw evidence of cataclysmic damage here and more drill holes. This is a circular saw cut, approximately five to seven feet in diameter. And there wasn't simply one. We saw two or three of these circular saw cuts, and the stone in this case is granite. And then Cappadocia, where we saw the fairy chimneys, and Cappadocia is absolutely massive in scale. Lots of ancient sites, including underground cities, such as this one, which is Derinkuyu. We were able to go at least 100 feet or 10 stories underground. We're told by the local experts that it is at least 20 stories um, underground in size, but we were only allowed access to the first half of it. The idea that this was done using hand tools, once again, I find very doubtful. They say that 20,000 people at one time lived inside of these, but that too I find very doubtful. But you can see also videos of all of the sites that we're exploring right now on my YouTube channel. So Derinkuyu is supposedly connected to other underground cities, which are <clears throat> several kilometers away. So again, the idea that this was all done with hand tools, I find very suspicious. And there's one way to go down and one way to go back up again. There may be other entrances and exits, but the official one is the one we went down and the official exit is the one that we went back up. And these staircases that you can see are made of concrete, and they're from the 1960s. So originally, they were a series of ramps going up and down. This is also in the Cappadocia area. Lots of tombs and habitations cut into the bedrock. and more and more of them. These go on for miles and miles. And this is at the main site in Cappadocia, or Cappadocia, uh, the location of the so-called fairy chimneys. There's even a small cafe inside one of them, as you can see here. and more of these habitations, hundreds of them, if not thousands of them. They mu must have been made over a very long time period. And some, I suspect, are much more ancient than what we've been told.
And finally, a look at some of the other dwellings cut into the hills in Cappadocia. And get ready for some upcoming events that you can explore with us. We're going back to Egypt in March of 2020. This will be my eighth annual tour. Right after that, we're going to Israel to explore the biblical sites as well as megalithic aspects. Then late May, early June 2020, contact in the desert in Indian Wells, California. Also in June, our annual Inti Raimi celebration of the Sun Tour, including Machu Picchu and other megalithic and Inca locations. In August, our annual Elongated Skulls of Peru, uh, Peru and Bolivia tour. And finally, to round off 2020, our annual November Explore the Mysteries of Peru and Bolivia, all at HiddenIncaTours.com.